Hey guys, Mars Lincoln here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. We are back for this week's episode of Fan Creation Friday, the series where I give you guys a theme over in the Discord to create your own custom card or easy A. And then at the end of the week, me and a selection of judges, which includes some of the mods and the previous winner from last week, will discuss the entries basically come together with a list of our favorites and then of course I will get the final decision as to which one will be the winner for this week. So the theme for this week was to create your own custom Dokkan Fest exclusive character that would be released into the game to lead a category that currently does not have a 170% leader. So that would include categories like All Out Struggle, World Tournament, uh, Giant Form, Inhuman Deeds, rapid growth there's a whole bunch of them that don't have a leader that has 170 percent in their leader skill if the category already has a leader that has a 170 even if it's like two 170s and a 130 or something like that then it wasn't included so it was anything that only has like a 150 or lower leader skill so i asked you guys to give me your examples there's a whole bunch that we're going to go through now so let us jump straight in and look at the first pick Okay, so for the first entry today, shout out to Patrick Star for his entry. Uh, we have a Master Roshi who will transform into Max Power Master Roshi. So he is a super physical unit. Um, obviously, this means if you want to run mono teams for ESBR or Battlefield, then obviously he's probably going to have a perfect link partner already with the free-to-play LR Roshi. So that is pretty cool. Uh, his leader skill is Turtle School or Earthlings category. Three key and 170 across the board so he is a 170 lead for both of these categories this will definitely make a very solid combo uh, this means you're going to be able to make a team that has like a good mix of some of the strong earthling units and then of course turtle school has basically every goku in the game so you can make a very very strong team out of this so his super attacks uh, as master roshi he does the thunder shock surprise which is raises attack and defense and causes immense damage to the enemy with a high chance to perform a critical hit for one turn so effects like this are always good because it means if he gets an additional even if it's a normal attack uh, that will also still have a high chance to crit and then once he's transformed into max power he does the full power kamehameha which greatly raises attack for three turns raises defense and causes immense damage to the enemy and gets a guaranteed crit for one turn so again additionals will be a guaranteed crit so the attack and defense stacking is infinite which is obviously good for super long events uh, and when he's in max power he still stacks defense at the same rate but the um, attack goes up to greatly raises attack for three turns so he stops infinitely stacking attack once he transforms but you still get a couple of stacks out of this so obviously he's going to be able to hit some pretty high numbers so his passive uh, as the master roshi is founder of the turtle school attack and defense 120 percent an additional attack and defense 30 percent when performing a super attack he has a great chance to evade enemy attacks as the first attacker in the turn a medium chance to dodge and defense plus 50 percent per attack evaded up to 100% as the second or third attacker in the turn. So this is kind of like what we saw from the Berta EZA where if you put him in slot one, obviously he has to attack first for this to activate and then he has a 70% chance to dodge. But because he is a stacker, you can build him up for a couple of turns till his defense is good enough to put him in slot one. So then it doesn't matter that he can't dodge any of those initial attacks because his defense is going to be very high. Um, and then, of course, once you've super attacked twice in slot two or three, you're getting a whole bonus extra 100% defense as well. So that's very strong. And then he also gives Turtle School allies two key and a 20% attack and defense. Bond of Master and Disciple allies two key and attack and defense 20% as well. So before we read his active skill passive, uh, his transformation passive, the transformation is an active skill which can be activated from the uh, fourth turn of the battle when HP is 30% or above. So very, very easy to get transformation condition. That's what we like to see. You're either generally going to be above that HP anyway, or if not, you were probably planning to heal that turn anyway. And as we know with active skills, if you go into the turn below 30% and then heal, it's then going to pop the ability for you to use it anyway. So then you can transform into max power, uh, Turtle Hermit's full power, attack and defense 150%, an additional attack and defense 50% when performing a super, great chance to evade and attack 50% 
so it's great chance to evade enemies attacks and attack 50% upon evading an attack as the first attacker in the turn medium chance to evade uh, and defense 50% per attack received as the second or third attacker in the turn so it looks like from this there's no cap so that is actually pretty crazy if you use him in slot two or three you get 50% extra defense per attack evaded. Oh, no, it says in a turn. Okay, there you go. That was good. I was going to say, we'd be getting into crazy OP levels if that was the case. Uh, attack and defense 20% if there is another turtle school ally attacking in the same turn. Attacks super effective against all types when facing a Dragon Ball Saga enemy or when facing an extreme type enemy. Turtle school and bond of master and disciple category 3 key and attack and defense 40%. So this guy is busted, basically. Um, he's a very strong leader for these two categories, but... But with the way that his passive works, you can very easily use him as a slot 3 floating support unit. Because he's giving a decent buff to allies on the team. As well as getting the extra defense and a chance to dodge in that third slot. Or you could run him on main rotation with the LR Roshi from the Tournament of Power. So overall, this is a very, very strong unit. Uh, his links as Roshi are in fighter supreme warrior turtle school prepared for battle brainiac shocking speed and fierce battle and then max power It's in fighter supreme warrior over in a flash shocking speed kamehameha turtle school and fierce battle So I mean we've never really seen outside of the global exclusive version of the PyCon We've never seen a non saiyan unit get prepared for battle But it's definitely something I would like to see them change in the future because it is one of the most common Key links and it's what sometimes prevents you from mixing units into say in heavy teams so that would definitely be good uh, and then his categories are full power dragon ball saga kamehameha bond of master disciple earthlings battle of wits and turtle school so very very strong entry from our boy patrick star shout out to you and let us move on to the next one okay so the next entry comes to us from gogeta and his unit is for a dragon ball saga krillin so eternal friend and rival krillin he is a super str unit uh, his leader skill is world tournament or turtle school three key and 170 across the board world tournament has been crying out for a long time for an actual proper leader so this would definitely be a good buff for that uh, his super attack is uh, i'm not even going to try and say this word uh, it does immense damage to the enemy and greatly raises attack for three turns with a chance of stunning the enemy. Uh, and then his passive is attack and defense 130 at the start of the turn. Key plus two and attack and defense 40% when there is another world tournament or turtle school ally attacking in the same turn. And then an additional attack and defense 7% per key sphere obtained when performing a super attack. So this is kind of similar to the way the GT Super Saiyans work. Uh, reduces damage received by 5% for each key sphere obtained as the first attacker in a turn. High chance to launch an additional attack which has a medium chance to become a super as the second or third attacker in the turn. And he randomly changes key spheres of a certain type to rainbow when there is another earthlings category ally on the team. So he does a whole bunch of different things depending on which slot you put him in as well as having other allies. So if you have a world tournament ally he obviously gets a nice big buff. Then depending on the more orbs you pick up, he's going to have more attack and defense. Uh, he also has more uh, built up damage reduction. It is as the first attacker in the turn again though. So remember any attacks that are coming in slot one, this won't be active. But then once he gets that super off, he's going to have very, very good defense and damage reduction. So obviously that means the super attack effect not having any sort of defense raise is not a negative because he gets most of that from his passive. Greatly raising attack for three turns is obviously really good because if you get an additional, that's another massive stack on top of that. And then a great chance to stun is obviously really good for things like Super Battle Road. So he also has an active skill which is the turnaround Kamehameha. It does ultimate damage to the enemy, stuns the enemy for one turn, and lowers attack and defense. Um, the, it says the extra... I'm looking for the notes here. The passive, the 5% da damage reduction per key sphere is applied after collecting orbs and separate from the attack and defense 7% per key sphere when performing a super attack. Okay, so this means this will apply so you do actually have the damage reduction for taking attacks in uh, slot one so that is actually a very very powerful effect and definitely very useful uh, the only thing is there is no condition for the active skill um, that's what I was checking the notes down here for so not sure when you can use the active skill but it's a damage dealing one uh, all my damage stuns hopefully you can use it early on because obviously getting the guaranteed stun uh, is super super good for super battle road and those fights don't normally last more than three or four turns 
Uh, and then the links, Turtle School, Courage, Solid Support, Brainiacs, Kamehameha, The Incredible Adventure, and Fierce Battle. Obviously, being a Dragon Ball Saga character, getting links like The Incredible Adventure are useful for that team, but not so much outside of it. But he has like Solid Support, Brainiacs, Kamehameha, those are all useful on other teams as well. And his categories are World Tournament, Turtle School, Kamehameha, Earthlings, Battle of Wits, Dragon Ball Saga, Youth, and Bond of Master and Disciple. So very, very strong unit here. Definitely would be fun to use. We haven't got a good or even... Uh, do we have a Dragon Ball Saga Krillin at all? Other than maybe an R or an SR from that Dragon Ball Saga banner. So definitely would be good to see a good Dragon Ball Saga Krillin. So shout out to Gogeta for his entry. And let us move on to the next one. Okay, so next up we have the entry from Inferno, and his entry is for a Great Ape Vegeta. I will say this one was a very close second. I had a tough time deciding between this one and the eventual winner. So shout out to Inferno. This one is very, very good. So this is an Extreme Tech Vegeta. <laughs> Trying to break that Extreme Tech curse by having a good Extreme Tech unit. Uh, he is a leader for Inhuman Deeds or Giant Form. So both of, both of these teams still lacking a 170 leader. Uh, Inhuman Deeds doesn't even actually have a proper Dokkan Fest leader at all. So this would definitely be a very good combo putting some of those units together. And obviously now we know we're going to start getting some Giant Form Easy A's very soon. Especially on Global. So this would definitely be a good team to take another look at. So his super attack is the Explosive Wave. It raises defense, greatly raises attack for one turn and does immense damage to the enemy. So obviously in infinite defensive stacking is always good. And then greatly raises attack for one turn. So if you get an additional, you're still going to do some extra damage in that turn. So very, very good. And then his passive is attack and defense 100%. He launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super attack. He then gets an additional attack and defense 10% when attacking. An additional attack and defense 20% when HP is 50% or above. Then he gets an additional attack and defense 30% when facing a pure Saiyan category enemy. And an additional attack and defense 40% and performs a crit starting from the fourth turn of the battle. So this guy builds up a lot over time. He's got a lot of different buffs that you can get based on the situation. So obviously against a pure Saiyan past turn 4 when you're above 50% HP. He's going to have very very high stats. So he's definitely going to look very good in the optimal team in the right situation. Then he has the active skill is to rage mode into a great ape so it could be activated during the fourth turn or from the first turn fourth turn from the start of battle turns into a great ape for one turn only so it is basically like a rage mode like the namek goku or the int rose uh, he becomes great ape vegeta his super attack is the super mouth cannon does destructive damage to the enemy and gets a guaranteed crit his passive, he gets attack 14% per key sphere obtained. So this is nice. I talked about this in the video about the uh, Great Apes EZA that I put out earlier today, where the apes really need some kind of buff. And rage modes are very similar because when you're in the rage mode, you don't get any links activated or anything like that. So the fact that A, he's getting a guaranteed crit means you're going to be doing decent damage. And then he also has a nuking style passive. So if you actually get lucky and can pick up quite a lot of orbs, that on top of a guaranteed crit means Means that he's going to be doing some very solid damage for that one turn because that can be the big problem with these rage mode units where you transform for that one turn and it's nice that you can't take damage but then you're not really doing a lot of damage yourself so i can see that definitely getting around that problem here and then he transforms back into vegeta but with a costume change he transforms back into battle damaged vegeta and then this is kind of like the krillin and uh, gohan where they put on the battle armor where his passive does actually change he doesn't go back to being exactly the way he was before so his super attack is the super explosive ray wave greatly raises attack for one turn does immense damage to the enemy and then the passive is a hunt attack 150 percent and defense 50 percent launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super reduces damage received by 15 percent after performing one super attack reduces damage received by an additional 20 percent after performing two super attacks and then an additional 20 percent after three super attacks so basically once he's super attacked three times you are going to have what 45 percent damage reduction so this makes up for the fact that he no longer has defense stacking and he doesn't quite have as high defense in his passive so obviously this does kind of make sense like theme wise because after transforming and he's battle damaged he's a bit weaker defensively but then he builds back up and has some very solid damage reduction and then if you're facing only one enemy he gets a guaranteed crit so guaranteed crit is a very strong ability but i mean str super vegeta has it so it's not outside the realms of possibility anymore 
Uh, his links are Saiyan Warrior Race, Royal Lineage, Saiyan Pride, Prodigies, Fred over 9000 and Fierce Battle. And his categories are Giant Form, Pure Saiyans, Dragon Ball Seekers, Vegeta Family, Terrifying Conquerors, Final Trump Card, Inhuman Deeds, Giant Eight Power, Space Traveling Warriors, Gifted Warriors and Planetary Destruction. So he's one of those LR Gohan going for the record of as many categories as possible. But it makes sense the character fits on all of them. So I'm sure you can agree this would be a very, very strong card, especially in the right scenario on the right team. So shout out to Inferno. Like I said, this was a very difficult choice between this one and the winner. So this one was a very close second. So shout out to you and let us move on to the final one. Okay, so last but obviously not least, we have the entry that is the winner for this week. So shout out to Sint from the Discord. Uh, he has created a Super Baby 2 Dokon Fest, which is, you know, thanks to some unreliable leaks a little while ago, was something that we all thought was actually coming to the game very soon, but as yet is still not a thing in Dokon. No Dokon Fest baby. So Super Baby 2. Uh, he is also an extreme tech unit. Uh, you would be surprised how many of the submissions we get for extreme units are extreme tech. I mean, it just goes to show you how much that like category still needs some help. So extreme tech super baby two. He would be the leader for inhuman deeds and GT bosses. HP 150 and attack and defense 170. Obviously, both of these categories need a 170 leader, and GT bosses desperately needs a proper leader that synergizes with the team very well. Because you guys know, as much as I love Super 17. Uh, the LR Super 17 just doesn't really fit very well with the GT Bosses team. So I would love to see this combination as well because it means we can start throwing some Freezers, Broly's, all those other kind of units onto GT Bosses as well. Very, very good. So his super attack name and effect is the Revenge Death Ball. Does extreme damage to the enemy and either performs a critical hit or massively raises attack for one turn. So this is interesting. He doesn't give the uh, percentage chances unless that's in the notes further down. So you're even going to get a guaranteed crit or massively raises raising attack for one turn which is kind of interesting a little bit of rng this would apply i assume when you get an additional as well so that could be very interesting um rng in units is sometimes annoying when it's things like has a chance to guard but i mean this is you get one or the other and both are good so that's kind of cool um, and then his passive is Vengeance Wrought from Hatred. Attack and defense 140%. Great chance of performing an additional attack when facing a pure Saiyan or hybrid Saiyan category enemy. Reduces damage received by 5% per link skill active up to 35%. So this is a really interesting new mechanic and is definitely something that I could potentially see them doing in the future. Um, getting this guy linked up with, say, maybe the LR baby. Uh, getting a bunch of those links active and then he has damage reduction this would obviously apply at the start of the turn as well so he could be a good slot one tank uh, he nullifies abnormal effects coercion attack lowering defense lowering stun super attack seal etc so this gets around the thing i mention in videos all the time my most hated mechanic in events where they lock your units in place and you have to use an item to cure status effects essentially this unit is immune to status effects so I assume that means on a rotation where the enemy can lock you in place, the other units could get locked in place, but not him. So as long as only the one in second or third slot gets locked, you could still move him around. And then obviously in events where the enemy can stun you with their super and things like that, he cannot be stunned with the super, but the other units can. But that is definitely a very interesting mechanic as well. And then he has an active skill. Which again has a sort of new mechanic here. His active skill actually differs depending on how much HP you have when you use it. So if you have 90% or more HP it does ultimate damage to the enemy. So it's just a straightforward damage dealing active skill. If your HP is 50% or less uh, it does ultimate damage to the enemy and reduces damage received by 40%. So if you use that at the start of the turn and then put him in slot 1, he's going to be a mega tank. And then when HP is 30%, it greatly raises attack temporarily, causes all my damage to the enemy and stuns the enemy. So the third one is going to be the most powerful and gets a guaranteed stun. Doesn't give you the damage reduction though, so I don't know if maybe that would be better on the lower HP one. So... I guess I should have read this out slightly differently. It probably should be written a little bit differently because I would assume that it's HP is 90% to... 50% because they do differ you don't get all of the abilities at once if you're at 30% I believe because of the way this is written so it would be HP between 90% and 51% is this one and then 50% to 31% is this one and then 30% or below uh, and then his links are 
Thirst for Conquest, Metamorphosis, Big Bad Bosses, GT, Hatred of Saiyan, Saiyan Raw, and Fierce Battle. His categories, Transformation Boost, Artificial Life Forms, Terrifying Conquerors, Target Goku, Final Trump Card, Revenge, Inhuman Deeds, Giant 8 Power, Space Traveling Warriors, Corroded Body of Mind, and GT Bosses. And then his active skill is activated once four turns have passed from the start of the battle or when facing a pure Saiyan or hybrid Saiyan. So if you're facing pure Saiyans or hybrids, you can use it from turn one. This would be really useful in Super Battle Road because say, for example, you go into a fight and you're at 50% HP and there's a pure Saiyan enemy. You could use his active skill straight away to do ultimate damage and get damage reduction. So you can have a very strong first turn in that super battle road so this one cinched it out for me as the winner just because it has a whole wealth of interesting new mechanics some of which i could definitely see being a thing in the future i think the way the active skill is worded is a little bit complicated but i like the idea of having different active skill effects based on when you use them so overall this card was very interesting and very creative so shout out to Sint for being the winner for this week's episode i'll be in touch with you at some point after this uh, as obviously Sint will now help us to pick the top picks for next week's episode so shout out to everybody who did put in your submissions we got a ton of them this week it's really nice to see you guys getting involved and submitting all these entries obviously not everybody can make it into the video because we can't have the video be too long but I do appreciate all you guys. I definitely enjoyed reading through them all. There was a ton of them that could have made it into the video. But to make it fair, the way we normally do this is I get myself and all the judges to pick our sort of top three. And if there's any picks that got picked multiple times, those ones will make it into the video. So there's definitely ones that we all really enjoyed that unfortunately didn't get a chance to make it. Some of you guys asked about it. So I will post the link to the form. Uh, probably tomorrow so you guys can actually look through the other entries um, I need to find a way of doing that because the way the Google Forms works at the moment I think the way I share the link it lets people who can look at it edit it which I obviously don't want people to do but we'll try and figure out a way to do that so shout out to everyone who did enter if you want to join for the next week's episode this is a competition that we only do from members of my discord so the link to join is down below I'll be posting a poll for next week's theme probably at some point over the weekend and then that form will go up on Monday so shout out to Sint once again for winning and to everybody who entered thank you all for another fun week for fan creation friday and uh yeah we'll be looking forward to seeing what the theme is for the next episode so that is going to be it for the video guys this has been the master again smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new check out the links down below for the discord and the merch store and i will see you all again soon have a good one